Let's go to part three on insulin resistance and fasting. We talked a little bit about insulin resistance and insulin, how they relate to insulin mutations in part one. Part two, we talked about how that relates to fasting and how people feel when they're intermittent fasting. Now let's talk about intermittent fasting, insulin resistance and thermobutyrate specifically. As I mentioned, some people don't feel that great when intermittent fasting. And it's usually, it's those people who have functioning insulin at full sensitization. Those who have developed various degrees of insulin resistance will feel better when intermittent fasting because ketones are being produced when you sleep and throughout the day as you fast, the longer you fast, you're, you're developing and creating more ketones for the brain. The brain can use ketones to make ATP and make more ATP typically than it can with glucose and using less oxygen. So that means that you're in a very efficient state if you're in ketosis through ketogenesis. And that's your ketogenesis means your body's making the ketones and they end up in the brain to serve the brain as energy substrates so the brain can make ATP. Why? Can ketones serve better than glucose at times? Typically, it's for those people who've developed various degrees of type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance, which are pre-diabetic states. And in fact, there's a type 3 diabetic state that they have now uh, coined, and it is the state of insulin resistance in the brain, which causes blood sugar to be mismanaged and does not easily cross into the neuron. Therefore, if you are one of those people, when you're in ketosis and the ketone becomes available for the brain, you're thinking in a way better state than you would have been in the insulin resistant state and depending on glucose, you see. Ketones do not depend on insulin signaling to enter the neuron so that the brain can use them for energy, you see. So this is why if you are insulin resistant or type two diabetic, when you fast, you feel better because now the brain is able to get an energy source, the ketone that your body made during the fasted state, and it feels alive. If you don't have insulin resistance and you're physically active and everything's good with your diet, typically you're not gonna feel a lot better in the intermittent fasted state than you would if you had a small high quality meal that was balanced in the morning. This is, this is the typical occurrence. Now, you take thermobutyrate, many things happen. Your appetite suppressed so you can stay in the fasted state longer. Two, you're improving insulin function. Three, you're improving the availability of blood sugar for the peripheral tissues. And four, you're breaking down fat so that they're available for ketone generation, you see? So thermobutyrate does all this stuff to actually correct and protect and, and prepare you for ketosis, prepare you for blood sugar management, and put you in control if you wish to intermittent fast. And intermittent fasting is different for different people for different reasons. A long fast that's over a couple of days will induce autophagy and correction and clearance of debris throughout the body. The intermittent fasting may just get there and not do what a two day fast can do. However, it begins a restorative process and gives you clarity of mind. Again, you're having difficulty going into ketosis and staying comfortable in that intermittent state, use thermobutyrate, that'll help you. But it could also mean that you are not significantly insulin resistant. So a smaller meal will help you throughout the day, like three to five smaller meals, starting with breakfast and thermobutyrate to help control blood sugar and fat management.